This is a comparison of the main downloadable computer Bible softwares out there. Each software pretty much does the same thing. It makes Bibles, commentaries, dictionaries, and other resources easily searchable. Bible softwares are a great way to look up the meaning of the Greek or Hebrew behind an English word because of a feature known as tagging. This means when you hover your mouse over a word, information about that word will be displayed. Each software comes with a certain amount of books, and these books are not transferable from one software to another, so you'll want to do a little research before spending money on one or more of them. Another thing to know is that a $200 commentary in Logos or Accordance can often be found for free or way cheaper in another software. This is because any book that's 95 years old is in the public domain, meaning anyone can copy and distribute it for free. Logos and some of the other softwares are paying large teams of full-time employees to edit and tag these books, which would not be possible unless they make money, whereas some of the smaller softwares are made by volunteers and fewer employees. I also want to note that as I tell the amount of books or resources available from each software, I'm only including English, Greek, and Hebrew books, not foreign languages. Sword Searcher is the first Bible software I want to cover. It costs $60 and comes with all 170 plus books currently available. You can rearrange your layouts by dragging the tabs around, and you can save or open layouts by clicking the square button in the menu section. You can only compare two Bibles at a time, which can be turned on or off with a button. The versions can be changed by right-clicking on that button and choosing from the list. It has a nice way of looking up commentaries. All commentaries available for a verse are shown on the far right. They can be hidden or shown with a button. All reference books are also shown below the commentaries on the right, and they too can be turned on or off with a button. Its searchability is quite nice. The full library search is able to search all Bibles or other books at one time. The results are neatly displayed using graphs to organize the hits. It also has suggestions for misspelled words, and it has a fuzzy search to search for similar words. You can see older search results under the main search window by clicking through the tabs. If you click the paper with the eye, you can see more stats about your search results. But you have to choose one Bible if you did a full library search, otherwise you can't see the paper with the eye. It comes with some Greek and Hebrew Bibles too, but there is no morphology to help figure out if a word is accusative or plural. You can search for a Greek or Hebrew word by copying and pasting it into a search, but you must have a Bible including that language in your search. You can see all the ways a Greek or Hebrew word is translated into English if you search for a word by Strong's number in the KJV SL. It only comes with one lexicon, which is the Strong's Greek and Hebrew. There are maps, but they are not searchable by words, they are just pictures. This software does not have any apparatuses or timelines available, but it does have a customizable Bible reading plan. It has decent notes which are automatically synced to the current verse. The notes can be hidden or shown with a button. Any reference you type in your notes will be searchable by hovering over it or clicking it. If a verse has a note, the four diamonds next to the reference will be colored in. You can also see what books, commentaries, or dictionaries have something to say about a verse by clicking the sync button next to the reference, and all the books with something to say will be highlighted in the tabs on the right. You can change from dark mode to light mode by clicking the circle at the bottom left of the page. The one drawback to this software is the available Bibles. It only comes with old English Bibles such as the KJV or Young's Literal Translation, etc. Paratext is a free Bible software. You have to fill out a form to be able to use it. 
uh, with I think you have to include your address because they want to figure out who's translating the Bible and where. But it's an automated download. Uh, you get an email with a link right away, so it's nothing, not a big deal. Uh, to get started, you'll need to download some books. Although it has a thousand books, only 60 plus are in English, Greek, or Hebrew. So you won't really care too much about a half of them or more. <coughs> you can fill out, you can filter out which books you want to download by typing Greek, English, or Hebrew, or the name of the book. Uh, and once you downloaded the books, you can uh, open them by clicking on the folder on the top left corner of the screen. The software includes a nice uh, interlinear resource, so you can look through the uh, gloss, the English gloss of a Greek word. Unfortunately, it only has a Greek with uh, tagged words, so it has morphology as tagged on it. But if you look up, like on the English uh, version of the Bible, you, there's really no tagged resources. In other words, it won't show you the Greek word behind the English word. Unless you buy an, unless you're from an organization, in which case you co it comes with about I don't know, remember how many extra resources, a couple hundred, and those include tagged resources. But for the average user, there's no way to buy them or get them. So uh, this is has one of the uniquest menus I've ever seen. Depending on which book you're clicking on, the menu actually changes, and you get new tabs. Uh, it's pretty decent at comparing books. Of, uh, or Bibles, I should say. You, depending when you click on a Bible, uh, it'll scroll the other Bibles to that verse, and you can open as many Bibles as you can see on your screen. Uh, let's see, I kind of touched on the interlinear. That's pretty nice. You can click through that. Uh, you can compare. I said that uh, you can look up Greek words by right-clicking on them and clicking on the lemma. I think you might be able to search. Uh, Greek words. Um, this has a pretty basic search function. You can uh, search, you know, either Greek words or English words. Uh, there's a little search bar depending on which Bible you click on, and uh, it does list the results out. But there's no organization. In other words, there's really no way to just click on one book. You have to scroll through the whole list. No graphs or anything like that. Um, you can it comes with two lexicons. And they're both Greek, so I don't think it comes with the Hebrew lexicon. And a lexicon is just a way to look up a Greek, the English meaning of a Greek word, all the definitions in English. Uh, so if you right click on the word, you can look up the lexicon. Uh, this is really a pretty bare bones software. It comes with a bunch of Bibles, English, Greek, and Hebrew lexicons. And there are no maps, timelines, commentaries, or any other features available. I think it has some notes. I'm not really sure how to use them. They might not even be able to use them uh, unless you're from an organization. Bible Analyzer is a free computer software with over 260 available resources. Probably about half of them are free, but you have to pay if you want to download the others. They are nicely organized in the module download manager by price or free. You can view and compare as many Bibles as you can fit on your screen. Uh, and the uh, Bibles have linked commentaries uh, which will show up uh, only for the applicable verse. Uh, Bible Analyzer has a nice search engine so you can search which kind of resource you want to view and you can search whether a single resource or multiple, for example all Bibles. You can search and view Greek Bibles and words uh, but there are only a handful of Greek and Hebrew Bibles currently available. Um, the search results are neatly organized by Bible and book, and there are also nice graphs to display the hit count. It has several lexicons, but, uh, but you have to have a tagged resource open if you want to find the Greek meaning behind an English word. You can just click on the word you want to search and all the available lexicons will light up. There is also an interlinear which can be turned on and off with the eye. It shows things like English gloss or the lemma or morphology. Uh, what's shown can be changed by clicking the options. This does come with maps and timelines but they are not searchable, just pictures. 
It has a nice way to write notes for any given ver verse, uh, and the notes are automatically synced to the current verse uh, you have highlighted or clicked on. Um, and all the notes that you've taken will be highlighted when you click on the, any verse with a note, uh, and it's also shown with the letter N, so you'll know which verses you have a note uh, written on. The software comes with some random features like a Bible quiz, a daily devotional, and uh, bookmarks. So you can uh, click Alt something and it'll remember which uh, verse you're on and you can go back to it later. But my favorite feature is the text-to-speech. Uh, so any book that you're on you can have read to you with its text-to-speech function either by just clicking the button and it'll read from the top of the page down or you can highlight what you want read and then click the button and it'll just read the highlight notes. You can also change the text-to-speech speed and pitch in the settings menu. And like most softwares, you can save and open your workspaces or layouts. Um, it has an available interlinear, but you also but you have to purchase it. The software also has a large amount of commentaries, about 70, but only 15 of them are free. The rest of them cost about five dollars a piece. Uh, all the books you buy can easily be re-downloaded on your any computer by typing in your email and password. And then you can re-download them all at one time. You don't have to do them one by one. Bible Time is a free computer software with over 327 books currently available. Unlike other free softwares, all 327 books are free to download, except one or two. Um, you have to, when you go into the download modules thing, uh, you have to check the languages you want to download. I normally check English and both modern and ancient Greek and Hebrew so I can view original resources, original language resources. Uh, once you've downloaded the books you want, they will no longer show up in the downloads manager. So the books you're looking at are all ones that you don't own. Um, you do have to index each book after you've downloaded it if you want to search it. Uh, and you, that takes about 20 seconds per book, but you only have to do it once. Uh, this software doesn't like either my Windows computer or my 50 inch screen because it's not in the correct proportion and certain things like commentaries can get pretty glitchy or slow. Although uh, Bible Time does have updates about once a year and it looks like it's due for a new update so maybe they'll fix some of that pretty soon. Uh, Bible Time claims to run on almost any operating system available for computers, so it will hopefully run better on your computer. You can view as many Bibles, commentaries, or dictionaries as you can fit on the screen, but on my computer, which is Windows 10, um, multiple commentaries don't show up. I can only see one at a time. And also, the syncing function between commentaries and Bible verse uh, gets really slow and depending on if it's a big commentary or a big book of the Bible, it can be like 20 to 30 seconds uh, every time I scroll to the next verse. After you've indexed your books, you can search for any word or phrase in all Bibles, commentaries, or any other book on your that you've downloaded. The results are organized by book, but other than books, there are no subcategories like New Testament or books of the Bible. Uh, it's basically just a word list of either word hits in your books or Bible verses. You can search for Greek or Hebrew words either by Strong's number or just by typing the word in um, in the Bible search and it'll find them as long as you have some amount of Greek or English Bibles that have Strong's numbers tagged uh, selected on your search results. Uh, there are an excellent selection of both Greek and Hebrew Bibles uh, and many of them are tagged with morphology uh, or Strong's numbers so you can um, quickly look up to see if it's uh, active or plural or what kind of tense and so on is in a Greek word and you can also see the different English definitions of any particular Greek word uh, also some English Bibles are tagged with Strong's numbers so you can 
hover over an English word and see what Greek word and what the definition of that Greek word is in English. Um, let's see, you can look up a Greek or Hebrew word in a lexicon um, by either copying a Greek or Hebrew word or just the Strong's number without the letter in front of it. So don't copy the G or the H, just the number. And then you paste that into the lexicon search. This software also comes with maps and a timeline, both of which are semi-searchable. I've noticed some words pop up and others don't, so kind of a hit or miss search function. It also has daily devotionals and a yearly Bible reading plan. Uh, the software also has an amazing amount of foreign language books. I would say probably at least double the books if you include foreign language books. Um, and it's kind of like uh, paratext, it's an amazing amount. Uh, so if you know someone that's from a different nationality, this might be a useful software for them. Sword is a free computer software which has over 220 available resources. Over half of the resources are free. Um, it's easy to download, but if you purchase uh, resources, you have to keep track of each product key. Um, and if you want to transfer them to a new computer, then you'll need to reuse those product keys. Or you can go to um, Options, Resource Settings, and then go to that location shown there and copy everything in that folder. And then once you've reinstalled eSword, you can paste into that same folder on your new computer. eSword has four sections or categories of books, a commentary section, a dictionary section, a Bible section, and a note section. There's also a Bible verse section, so you can look up the verses. Um, each section is movable and collapsible according to your preferences. You can view multiple Bibles at a time by clicking on the parallel Bible, or you can view all Bibles by clicking on the compare, and that'll go to just the verse that's highlighted for all Bibles, and if you want to go to the next verse, you have to click on the Bible with the little arrow icon next to it. Um, Bibles, some Bibles are tagged, and this is in, indicated with a plus sign, and a tag Bible might have information about morphology, or Strong's numbers, or some kind of notes. Um, it does have morphology for Greek, New Testament, and Old Testament, it has the tag Septuagint, but it doesn't have, at least I couldn't find, a Hebrew morphology. I know Logos and Accordance do. Um, it also has a free interlinear Bible, but all the fuel fields are always on. You can't collapse and show whichever fields you want. Uh, if you click on a verse, all the commentaries with information for that verse will show up with an I. Um, and the same thing for lexicons. If you click on a Greek word, all the lexicons will show up with an I, indicating it has information in that lexicon. Uh, you can do searches in English, Greek, or Hebrew words, um, and it'll list through, uh, all your results for the, the current Bible. And uh, there's not really a great graph, it's basically just a list of results and verses. Uh, there are timelines and maps, but they're just pictures, and again, they're not searchable. There is also a Bible reading plan, um, a daily devotional, a prayer request calendar, and an audio Bible option, but it's only available for the King James Bible. There is also a bookmarks function, so if you right click on the scroll icon, you'll save your current verse, and then if you go and left click on that same scroll, it'll go to that verse in whatever Bible you're on. Sword also has a good note system, which syncs to the current verse for all Bibles. And if you click on a verse, uh, the study notes will sh show if you have a verse or a note for that verse uh, with an I. 
The Word is a free computer software with over 470 resources available, about two-thirds of which are free. This software has the most free commentaries of all the Bible softwares out there, with about 70 free ones and more available to purchase. Under Add Titles, you can go to Download Books uh, from multiple repositories, which you can go between by clicking on the top right of the screen. You can only download from one repository at a time. You can't select books from multiple repositories and download at the same time. The flags represent the language of each book. You can select group by language just to make sure you know what each flag represents. If you're not seeing some titles, reselect Show All Titles from the drop-down. It glitched on me once and was actually only showing titles added within the last 30 days. You can add or remove categories of books from your workspace by clicking the window menu and adding a new book view. Then you can select what category of books you want to show in the new book view. You can rearrange and resize each book window how you like. You can also change how each book view displays its books by clicking the green icon and going to the options and selecting tabs in multiple rows. If you want to close a section, you can click the window menu and choose close from any section. Or you can click on the show options tab and click the X. Or you can click the window and hit the escape key on your keyboard. You can also save or open your favorite saved layouts by clicking the tab at the top of the screen. The software has a nice way of viewing and comparing Bibles. You can compare as many Bibles as you can fit on your screen by clicking Compare. You can change the layout to vertical or horizontal. Uh, if you want to see more resources, horizontal works best. Um, and because horizontal can view more Bibles, the software remembers what Bibles you had open last in both vertical and horizontal views separately. You can also rearrange the Bible order uh, by clicking the arrows in the compare menu. If a Bible has tagged information, you can hover over a word to see morphology, Strong's definitions, or other information. If you're not seeing morphology or something when you hover over the word, it might be because the option is not checked under the gear icon uh, to the left. Or it might not be a tagged resource. It's a little confusing because you actually have to click the little arrow next to the gear icon in order to change what the pop-up shows. If you click the gear icon, uh, it will change the display settings. If you click on a word or verse, any commentaries, lexicons, notes, or other books with information about the word or verse that you clicked on will be highlighted in yellow. There are a few things that might keep your books or notes from syncing uh, to the selected verse. You have to have the red paper clip selected um, and your notes won't sync if the I is selected. So unselect the I and select the paper clip. You can search a word in any or multiple resources by opening a book search or a Bible search. Then you have to select the appropriate category of books or the kind of Bibles you want to search. You can view the results of the Bible search by selecting them and using add all results to the list. You can view the, li the list um, under Bible view under list. You can also click the show verse button in the search Bibles tab. Uh, you can save the current verse as a bookmark by clicking the plus icon, and you can remove a bookmark by right-clicking on it and selecting Remove. You can also copy the current verse or the verse reference by selecting the verse you want uh, to copy and clicking and right-clicking on it and selecting the appropriate option. Uh, you can also customize the way a verse is copied when you click Copy Verse. If you want to go back to a verse, you can click the back or forward arrows, and if you want to drag the text 
instead of scrolling, you can click the little hand icon. If the text is too small, you can increase or decrease the size with the magnifying glass. There are several Greek and Hebrew Bibles which can be searched either by right-clicking on a word and selecting Look Up by Lemma or Strong's, or you can copy the word and paste it into the Bible search bar. And make sure that it's searching for Bibles with Greek or Hebrew words. You can look up a Greek word in a lexicon by uh, right-clicking on the word, or actually just left-clicking on the word, on the Greek word or the English word um, if it's tagged with Greek information. Whatever lexicons are available will be highlighted yellow um, in the dictionary section unless you click on an English word uh, in which case only the English dictionaries are highlighted but it seems to me to be a glitch because there's actually information under the Greek lexicon, so you can see the Greek information behind the English word. You just have to click on them, and they're not highlighted for whatever reason. But if you click a Greek word, it's always highlighted. You might want to build a custom section just for Greek and Hebrew lexicons by clicking the green icon and selecting Define Module Sets and selecting Create Custom Set. The list on the left is all the books from every category, and the list on the right is the current books shown in whatever category your selected book view is. You can either delete the books manually or filter by selecting or by typing a word. I normally type lexicon and click apply. This will not permanently change or delete anything except what is shown in the current book view. I want to emphasize you are not changing the general rule for a category like commentaries or dictionaries and you're not permanently deleting or changing any resources uh, by deleting them from the list. You can take notes which are automatically synced to the current verse. The notes are located with the commentaries. If you click on a verse you've made a note for, the notes tab will be highlighted. You can also highlight or mark up a verse but it will only apply to the version you originally highlighted, not to all Bibles. There are maps, but they are not searchable, just pictures. There are no timelines, but there is a Greek apparatus available uh, for purchase, which shows uh, some textual variants uh, from the different manuscripts for each verse. I'm not sure how good it is. I know Logos has a really nice one that is continually updated. And Accordance also has a pretty nice apparatus, um, if you wanted to really look into that. There are also Greek and Hebrew courses, uh, daily devotionals, a parallel gospel lookup uh, function, and a Bible readings plan, which you can buy or download for free in the um, books download menu. If you have the purchased if you have purchased books and want to transfer to a new computer, you might have to copy and paste each book key into the unlock module section in the help menu. It's a little tedious, but most books I wanted were free anyway, so it wasn't a deal breaker to me. Logos is a free computer software, but like 99% of its books cost money. It has over 5,600 resources, and they cost anywhere from free to $500 each. It is the second most expensive software to buy the same books the other softwares have, but it has the most books available by far, and it has the best tagging and most powerful tools to view those books. Logos has a lot of features and a lot of ways to customize them. The features are located in the Tools and Guides menus. Some of the tools and guides are redundant, showing the same things in different ways, so I'll briefly explain the tools and passage guides I like to use. In the Bible Word Study tool, I add the Lemma, Root, Translation, Septuagint Translation, and Senses sections. All other sections I close. Then I make sure to link to my current Bible. This will make it update when I click on a word in my Bible. Some tools are automatically updated without linking, but not this one. 
you can see if a resource is linked by the orange letter in the tab. The Lemma section is one of my favorite tools in Logos. It summarizes the lexicons by showing the main English uses for a Greek or a Hebrew word. Not all lexicons are summarized, and even the ones that are don't include every definition, but it's so nice to quickly glimpse most of my lexicons at one time without opening each one. The root section shows the root of the word you clicked on, on the top of the list, and it lists all the words with that root in them. It shows which word you clicked on with a circle. Most of the other Bible softwares can also show the root word behind the word you clicked on using the NASB dictionary located in their lexicons or dictionary section. But they don't show as nicely a list of all the Greek or Hebrew words with that root and some don't have the ability to show that at all. The translation section shows all English words used to translate the Greek or Hebrew behind the word you clicked on. You can change the Bible translation of this graph by clicking the settings tab. If you want to see all the Greek words used to translate a specific English word, you have to either click on an English word not tagged with Greek or Hebrew or type the English word you want to see in the word study search bar. If you click on one of the words shown in the graph, it will list all the usages of that word in the Bible. Several of the other Bible softwares can look up all the English words behind a Greek using the NASB dictionary, but they don't have a one-click way to look up all the Greek words behind an English word. Senses is Logos' own lexicon. It shows the different ways the Logos team thinks a Greek word can be translated into English. In the Information tool, I open Word Info, Definition and Translation, and I close all the rest. This section is automatically synced to your Bible. Under Word Info, I go to the Settings and turn on Morphology, Lemma, Root, and both glosses. Really the only thing I use is morphology. If you hover your mouse over any of the morphology, it explains what it stands for. This is the clearest explanation of what morphology means out of all the other softwares I have seen. It still helps to take a Greek or Hebrew course, but this tool helps explain morphology even if you don't know any Greek or Hebrew. The definition section is actually the NASB dictionary. It shows all the English words used to translate the Greek behind the word you clicked on in your Bible, and the number in parentheses represents the amount of times these English words were used to translate that same Greek or Hebrew word. The translation section shows the different ways the Bibles you bought translate the word you clicked on. Not all the Bibles I own are shown here, but only the ones the Logos team has tagged so far. In the Explorer tool, you can't close or open the sections. You have to link this to your current Bible if you want it to update as you scroll. The only sections I use are the Commentary section and the Cross-Reference section. Their names explain what they do, and each section will update as you scroll through verses. In the passage guide, I only open word by word. This has to be linked to the current Bible. This is one of the easiest ways for me to learn Greek and Hebrew words. It shows and explains the tenses, pronunciations, and English meaning of each Greek or Hebrew word. It has a button to pronounce almost every Greek and Hebrew word. It also shows where the word is in the sentence of the original language, so I can get an idea of how that language is structured. I also like the Memorize tool. It asks you to type the verse in, and it helps you less and less. I use the Passage List tool under Documents to create and save a list of my favorite verses. Then I click the Memorize button and choose a verse to work on. There are quite a few other tools and resources available, but these are the main ones for studying the Greek and Hebrew behind the English Bibles. Before I go any further, I want to mention a few settings worth changing. I like using the dark theme, especially for night reading. I prefer the toolbar on the top because it gives me more room for my bookmarks. I like Start Up To Be 
on my most recent layout so I can pick up right where I left off when I close and open the software. I like to turn copy citations off because it pastes annoying footnotes at the bottom of Word documents every time I copy and paste a new verse. And lastly, I make sure internet is on on. Automatic downloads is on 24-7, in my case, midnight to midnight, and download new books is on. This way, I'll never have to wonder if the books I purchased are downloaded yet. I also want to mention that you can create bookmarks of any resource by opening it and dragging the tab to the top of the screen. Then you can customize the bookmark's name and icon by right-clicking on them. I just use icons to save space because you can hover over the bookmark and show the name. There is a lot of ways to organize layouts in Logos and it's important how you do it because if all your linked tabs are constantly updating it can slow your computer down as you scroll through the Bible. One way to make your computer run faster is to put multiple tabs in each section. Only the open tab on each section will update so you can put a bunch of less used tabs in each section and they won't really slow anything down. Also, you can collapse the sections in the open tab and they won't update as you scroll or click on a word. By using these tricks, you can have all your resources open and ready to go but hardly slow down your computer. You can save or open layouts by clicking the icon on the top right. Once you have everything the way you like it, you can view as many books as you can fit on your screen. There are several ways to view and compare Bibles. You can click multiple Bibles on the main Bible tab, or you can open multiple Bible tabs, or you can open the text comparison tool. If you open multiple Bible tabs or click the multiple books button, Logos has a word highlighting feature which can be customized to highlight the same English words in all translations by clicking the same word. Or you can also highlight the Greek and Hebrew words behind an English word by clicking same lemma. The same lemma feature only works if the translation is tagged with Greek and Hebrew. Selecting lemma will also highlight all the English behind a Greek and Hebrew translation but both tabs have to have the lemma option selected. If you didn't know, a lemma is the standard form of a Greek or Hebrew word. In Greek or Hebrew, the first and last letters of a word can change if the word is plural or feminine or accusative, etc. So scholars chose a standard form to represent all the variations of each Greek, Hebrew or Greek word. For example, a Greek lemma is always nominative and singular, but never accusative or plural. When using the multiple books button, you can change the Bibles you compare by clicking the little arrow next to the multiple books button. There is also an interlinear button so you can see the Greek and Hebrew behind the English Bible or the English behind the Greek and Hebrew Bible. You can choose what kinds of information you want to see. There is also a reverse interlinear option which shows all the possible information for the word you clicked on. And there is a different option in the Greek and Hebrew interlinears to show only information on a word occurring less than 500 times. This is nice if you've memorized a lot of the common words anyways. If you're wondering, Laonida and Strong's are just reference numbers to look up a word in the Laonida or Strong's lexicons. They are useless because Logos links every lexicon to every word just by clicking on it, so I never have them shown. There is also a button called Factbook. If you turn it on and the word is tagged with facts, it will be underlined by blue. Clicking on an underlined word will bring up contextual information about the person, place, or thing. If you by the feature package for Logos 10, there is also a button that can translate the Bible or book you have open into the language of your choice, but you need an internet connection to use it. The text comparison tool is the best way to look through all your Bibles at once. I look into my Bible so that it will update to my current verse when I go to it. I always use the vertical layout so I can skim through all my Bibles for a verse. 
You can manually search for the Bibles you want to compare, but if you're like me, it's nice to create a collection so you can open all English Bibles or my 10 favorite commentaries, etc. You can do this by going into the tools and searching for collections. Then you can search through your library either with the search bar or opening your library and dragging the books to the list. The plus list and the books in the results from your current search will all be part of your collection. So remember to delete the search word when you close the collection or all those books will be part of that collection. You can also add books to the negative section and they will not be included even if they show up in the search results. You can delete a collection by going to open and right clicking on the collection you want to get rid of then select delete. In the text comparison tool you can select a collection and save yourself in the future. The A is a comparison button which shows where there is a difference between the top Bible and the rest of the Bibles. And the A crossed out actually crosses out the words and replaces them with the top Bible. It might be nice for comparing just a few Bibles, but I never use it when comparing a bunch of Bibles because it's too much information. If you want to go back to a previous verse, you can either use the arrows, which can only go back nine times, or you can open the history tool and scroll through all the verses, word searches, books, or tools that you've opened in the past. In the Bible Tree Lookup section, there is a bookmark section called Favorites. This is a bookmarking tool. You can hold Control plus Shift and type whatever number to either save a new bookmark or overwrite a previous one. And you can hold Control plus that same number to go to the shortcut or bookmark that you just created. You can also click Add to add your current verse to a separate favorites list and you can delete those favorites by right-clicking on them and selecting Delete. If you want to search for a word or phrase, you'll want to click the magnifying glass on the top right. If you type your word into the main search bar, it will change your current layout, closing some books and opening others, so I never use it. There's also an inline search, but it doesn't show the results well. In the search screen, you can choose what type of resources you're searching. If you leave the search blank, you can see the different kinds of ways you can search for things. You can make your search case sensitive by clicking the underline letters, and apparently you can make your search more or less broad, but I keep mine on default. I use my English Bibles group, but you can select all your Bibles manually too. I leave the next field on all Bible text. I like to search for my words within a verse because a chapter search can find all my words, but it isn't necessarily the passage I was looking for. Generally, I keep my searches in the whole Bible, but you can type whatever book you want or select some from the dropdown. I normally check grid for the ways to show results. This only shows the Bibles that had one or more of my search results. If a Bible version has a match, it is shown by a solid colored square. You can view any version by hovering over the square. You can change the version that is shown on the right by clicking it. You can search a Greek or Hebrew word by selecting Greek or Hebrew Bibles in the search screen and typing or pasting the word in. If you want to find more information about the Greek or Hebrew behind an English translation, you can just click on that word, and the Bible word study and information tools will show all kinds of information. In order to use the Atlas tool, you need an internet connection. You can look up most places in the Bible by right-clicking on them and selecting Atlas. I keep the Atlas tool and my bookmarks for a quick reference. You can search for a place by typing it in, and the Atlas will generate a map of the surrounding area. If you leave the Atlas search blank, you can select a theme from the drop-down, and it will show all the names of places relevant to that time period. There are several Greek and Hebrew courses in Logos. 
The courses have a lot of things tagged in them, so you can just click or hover over a blue word and it will show or take you to that location. Logos also has several apparatuses for both the New and Old Testaments. I think they do a pretty good job of keeping them up to date. Each apparatus is for a specific testament or language. There are several for the Greek New Testament and several for the Hebrew or Greek Old Testament. The nice thing about Logos' apparatuses is that the, it tags all the letters and numbers so you don't have to constantly go to the definitions page and remember what they mean. There are two words most apparatuses use which are kind of confusing. Lacuna, which means non-existent or missing, and extant, which means it exists. The CNTTS apparatus costs about $100, but it has 17,000 pages of material on the manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. Because there are so many manuscripts with so many differences, they break each verse down by sections. Each section uh, number contains a word or phrase from that verse. Each vertical row represents a different kind of information. The first row shows if it's an addition or a subtraction from the agreed upon most accurate and dependable manuscripts, uh, which is known as the UBS. The next row shows how uh, significant the differences are. The third row shows information about what kind of difference it is. Sometimes it's a spelling difference or a capitalization thing. The fourth row is the actual Greek word or phrase from that manuscript. And the fifth and last row is the name of that manuscript, including information about how old it is and where it is located, etc. Each apparatus has its own way of organizing and showing things. I really like the simplicity of Mexiker's apparatus on the Greek New Testament. He only talks about the differences in manuscripts that are of higher importance, and he explains things in an easier way to understand. Logos has the best timeline tool of all the softwares, although it's a little confusing to use. You can type a name into the search bar and hit enter to see information about it. You can then click the hamburger icon to see the filter section. If you want to see more information about that name, you have to check the boxes. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll vertically, or you can click and drag uh, to look through the data. You can also use the horizontal and vertical scroll bars to look around. Uh, the little marks above the horizontal bar show that there is information there. You can clear the search by clicking All on the top left corner of the screen. Logos has 18,000 names, places, eras, etc. So you'll want to narrow the search down by clicking a filter, like Places and Israel. You can organize the information by type, subject, or both in the view dropdown. Then you can minimize some categories so you just see what you're looking for. You can change the length of years you're looking at multiple ways. You can type it into the date search bar, or you can hold control and scroll your mouse wheel, or you can click one of the horizontal scroll circles and drag it out or in. Unfortunately, if you zoom out to see everything, there are lots of dates in a short period of time, so Logos has to stack them all up, making the vertical scroll bar longer. So if you have a lot of information, you're better off shrinking the amount of years shown on the horizontal bar. That way, you don't have to constantly go up and down the vertical bar as you scan through things horizontally. You can also click Fit All Event to Screen if you just typed a name which won't have much information. That way you can see everything at once. Logos also has one of the nicest note-taking tools. Once you open the Notes tool in the Tools menu, you can create a new notebook. You have to click the hamburger menu and then click the notebook icon and then click the plus icon to create and name a new notebook. A notebook is just a way to organize notes. I normally create a new notebook for each year. You can delete any notebook by clicking it and clicking the options icon next to it. To add a note to a verse or verses, 
you can just highlight them and right click on them. And then you can select the appropriate notebook you want your notes to be in. As long as you keep a notebook tab open to your favorite notebook, it will always show up in the list of suggestions. Otherwise, you can change notebooks once you select Add Note from the right-click menu. You can choose an icon and color for your current notebook by clicking the shape icon in the top left of the screen. You can also highlight your current note in all Bibles by clicking the highlight icon next to it. You can choose to show or hide all markups and icons for any notebook you created by clicking the visual filter for your current Bible and checking or unchecking the notebooks you want to see. When you highlight a verse and right click and then click add note, it will automatically tie that note to that verse you highlighted. But if you want to tie a note to a different verse or multiple verses, you just click add anchor. Uh, that way, your icon and highlighting will also apply to those verses, and when you click on the icon, it will open that note. When you're writing a note, any reference you correctly spell or abbreviate will be turned into a hyperlink, so you can click on it or hover it to see that verse. If you want to see all notes from all notebooks, you can click the All in the All tool in the top left of the Note tool. Then you can sort the by date modified or date created from the dropdown. Logos also has a designated highlighting tool, but it adds blank notes every time you use it uh, to highlight part of a verse. And if you highlight a verse that already has a note, it sometimes the highlight gets tied to that verse and I couldn't delete the highlighting unless I went to that note and got rid of it there. There are quite a few other tools and resources located in the documents, passage guides, and tools menus. Things like custom crossword puzzles, or sermon notes, or word trees for Greek and Hebrew grammar. There are also ways to share notes online and to look at other people's notes and highlights, but I couldn't figure that out. Accordance is a computer software that costs $50 for the starter kit. It has 2,000 resources available, but like 99% of them cost money. Book for book, it might be slightly more expensive than Logos, although there are discounts for certain people. The collections are one of the cheapest ways to buy a bunch of books in Accordance. I want to show a couple of different books I bought in Accordance. The graphics learner is the cheapest way to get the timeline and the atlas features. The parsing guide to the Greek of the KJV, which actually works on any translation, is the only way to see the morphology definitions in accordance. The Hebrew New Testament is nice because it's tags with Strong's numbers so you can hover over a Greek word and see it highlighted in Hebrew. The English Bible add-on is a good way to buy lots of Bibles to compare. Most of the best Bibles are tagged with Strong's numbers, so searching for the words with Strong's numbers is a good way to see if there are any Bibles you might want to purchase. Only the Bibles with Strong's numbers will have interlinears built in, and they will all cross-highlight when you hover over a word. These next two aren't that important, but the Targums are from Old Aramaic manuscripts of the Old Testament, and the Peshitta is from the Syriac, they're from Old Syriac manuscripts of the New and Old Testaments. Generally, scholars focus on the Greek and Hebrew manuscripts when translating the Bible, but these two translations have manuscripts dating from the 5th to the 1st centuries, so they also have some value. Once you've purchased Accordance, you have to go to the support page to download the software. I want to start my walkthrough of Accordance by explaining the main interface and the features I like to use. There is a customizable menu on the top which can be changed by right clicking on it and adding, removing, or rearranging the menu buttons you want. The library is the best way to find and open a book you own. The settings or preferences has several things worth knowing and changing. 
The shortcuts section lets you create or change shortcuts for lots of things, so it might be worth skimming the list if you use Accordance often. In the text display, tool display, and user notes sections, you can change the default size of text for all the books you open or every new side window you open, or the notes you create. There is a preview window so you can see what size things will be before you click OK. You can change these text sizes manually too, but using preferences will make everything open to the right size without having to change it. You can also change the live click and instant detail settings here, but I'll explain them in a little bit. Dark mode is a nice way to view things at night. You will want to make sure Notes is added to your custom menu because this is the only place you can create new notebooks from. You will also want to add highlightings to your custom menu because it's the only place you can change the color of your highlighter. Workspaces is Accordance's way of saving your current layout. It comes with some pre-made sample layouts just to give you some ideas. In the main window, I open all the Bibles I want to compare using the Add Parallel button. Accordance calls Bibles texts. I also like to add a Greek or Hebrew morphology helper under Add Parallel Reference Tools, and depending on if I want Greek or Hebrew morphology, I select either Greek Studies or Hebrew Studies and select the option that says Parsing. If you don't have that option, it's because you haven't bought or downloaded the Parsing Guide to the Greek that I showed earlier. The Morphology tool is the only way you can see brief explanations of Greek or Hebrew morphology without taking a Greek or Hebrew course. You can also add a syntax section which will break each Greek or Hebrew sentence down into the English structure of verbs, nouns, predicates, and so on. But I'm not advanced enough to care much about that personally. I normally view the parallel Bibles in the vertical position, and I create two rows which can be done by clicking the gear and choosing Move Down. There is also a way to combine resources. Some Bibles only include the New or Old Testament, like the Septuagint or the Greek New Testament. Any resources that can be combined has a double square icon, and you can choose from a list of books to make it a complete New and Old Testament. Accordance has a bookmark feature to remember passages or paragraphs in a book. If you highlight a section and right-click on it and choose Bookmark, or use the shortcut Control 7 you can save it in a list which can be seen in your library or the little bookmark icon. The nice thing about the bookmark icon is Bible bookmarks only show up if you have a Bible open and regular book bookmarks will only show up if you have those books open. You can see all your bookmarks at once in the library under My Bookmarks. There are several ways to look up information about a word or search your lexicons for a word, but the easiest way is using live click. Once selected, any tagged word you click on will show results in all your lexicons. Accordance will also do a word study which, depending on the live click settings you choose, will either show all the Greek words used to translate an English word, or it will show all the English words used to translate a Greek word. In the Live Click options, I only select the Lexicon Lookup and the Word Study. The other two options aren't very helpful. In the Greek and Hebrew section, I select Lexem, which will show the results for the general form of the word I clicked on. If I wanted to match the case and gender and plurality of that word, then I would click the inflected. In the key number section, the key number option will show all the English words used to translate the Greek or Hebrew word I clicked on. And the word option will show all the Greek and Hebrew words that can be used to translate the English word I clicked on. I change these settings depending on what I want to see. This is a good time to mention the recycling button. 
When this button is checked, any new search or live click will reuse the same tab instead of opening a new tab. If I turn recycling off and do a live click search, it will open two new tabs instead of just reusing the last live click tabs I had open. Besides adding parallel resources, there are two other ways to compare multiple resources in accordance. You can open multiple tabs and then right click on each tab and select tie tabs to each other. This way they will sync to each other as you scroll through them. The last way to view multiple resources is good for comparing lots of Bibles. If you click on the plus tab and select text browser, you can view all your Bibles at one time. My favorite way to use this is to create multiple text browsers and tie them all together so they all sync when I go to the next verse. Then I create multiple groups of Bibles so that each text browser shows a different group of Bibles. You can change the amount of verses shown in each Bible in the verse menu. There is also an interlinear option in the text browser for tagged resources. I normally select the English gloss for any language I'm not good at translating. If you want to create some groups, you have to open your library, then go to My Groups and right click it and select Add Folder. Then you have to go to the text section of your library and right click on the books you want to add to that group and select Add. Once your groups are created, you can drag and drop Bibles from one group to another. You can also rearrange the order of the Bibles in a group by dragging them around. The order of Bibles in a group will be the same as the order they show up in the text browser, so you might want to put your favorite Bibles at the top of the list. Another thing to consider when creating these groups is that all tagged resources will highlight the same word when you hover over it, but this only works within each individual text browser so you can't cross-highlight tagged words between text browsers. But you can. I normally put all my tagged Bibles in one group. That way I can still use the highlight feature on them all. There are two ways to search for a word or phrase in accordance. You can use the main search bar, which only searches your current book, which can be changed in the drop-down on the left, or you can use the research search bar which lets you select multiple resources to search in. If you use the main search bar you can change the number of verses shown after your word search. This will give you more context. You can use the scroll bar to quickly scan through all your search results but if you slide the context verses all the way up to all verses then you probably won't want to use the scroll bar because you will be scrolling through the whole Bible. If you search for a word in the research bar, it categorizes your results by Bible. You can skip to a version by clicking on it or just scrolling down to it. Sometimes it's nice to click the gear icon and choose full text instead of viewing the abbreviated version. You can also view your search results in graphs and charts by clicking the circle icon and selecting the appropriate option. Hit count shows you all the books in the Bible where your search was found and selecting bar chart will show all the different Greek, Hebrew, or English words that match the words you typed in the search. I want to mention one thing about the main search bar that is kind of frustrating. Unless you clear your last search, the bookmarks bar doesn't work and other weird things can happen as well. So it's a good idea to delete your last search and hit enter on the keyboard if you see the little analytical circle on the right. The info section is how Accordance shows all the related texts to the passage you are looking at. I normally use it for commentaries and cross-references. In the settings, I go to Set Info Pan Options and change Commentaries to show 40 and I change the size to small so I can quickly skim through all my commentaries at once. The nice thing about the commentary section is that you can long click on any commentary and quickly see and scroll through it without having to open a new window. 
Instant Details is a quick way to see all of the tagged information behind whatever word you hover your mouse over. I like to see as much as possible, so I go to Preferences and Instant Details and I check all the boxes. I also choose full words because sometimes abbreviations are kind of confusing. You can search a Greek or Hebrew word multiple ways. You can turn on live click and click on the word you want to look up, or you can right click on the word and select search for and choose key number. Or you can copy a Greek or Hebrew word and change the main search bar, Bible, to a Bible of that language and paste and search it there. Or you can type or paste a word into the research bar and select that language from the drop down. Then select all texts, which will search all Bibles of whatever language you selected. If you want to look up a word in your lexicons, you can turn live click on with key number selected from the options menu and just click on a tagged word. Or you can paste or type a Greek or Hebrew word into research and select that language and select Greek or Hebrew lexicons. Or you can right click on a Greek or Hebrew word and select research and select either Greek or Hebrew lexicons. Accordance offers multiple apparatuses. Their CNTTS apparatus is set up the same way Logos is. You can hover over things to see what they mean or view information about a manuscript. You can either type the verse you're looking for into the search bar or you can tie your apparatus to your current Bible and whatever verse you're on will be synced to the apparatus when you click on it. Accordance has a variety of Greek or Hebrew courses to choose from, which are tagged just like the ones in Logos. Accordance has a notes feature that functions similar to Logos. You can create notebooks in your custom menu notes dropdown. This way you can organize your notes better. To create a new note, you can either click the little plus icon next to the verse you want to write a note on, or highlight it and click Edit User Note. Both these methods will add a note to your most recent used notebook. But if you want to add a note to a different notebook, you can right click on the little plus icon next to the verse and choose a notebook from the list. When you create a note, it will be visible in all Bibles, but only the active window in parallel Bibles will show the note icon. If you click the gear with a paperclip over it, Accordance will automatically turn any verse references into hyperlinked texts so you can click on it to see the verse. If you want to look through all the notes in a notebook, you have to open your library and go to My Notes and click on the notebook you want to view. There is also a highlight feature. When you select some words, a little highlight option will appear and you can either choose color or a symbol. Your highlights will only apply to the current Bible you are on. You can clear highlights by selecting them and clicking the eraser button. You can change the color of your highlights by going to the notes menu and clicking the gear icon and selecting define highlight styles. You can create multiple highlight groups by going to the same highlight gear and selecting New Highlight File. Then you can select what group you want to be shown from the drop-down menu on the left. Unfortunately, you can only show one highlight group at a time, but you can merge groups together if you want to see them both at the same time. To do this, you have to go to the highlight gear and select Merge Highlight Files. Accordance has an atlas or maps tool, which you can use to look up most places you run across while reading the Bible. You can just right click the word you want to see and select look up in atlas, and Accordance will generate a map with your word highlighted in red. You can also search for a place by typing it into the search bar inside the atlas. You can create a 3D rendering of any section 
by selecting it and clicking the little mountain icon in the top right of the screen. The only way to zoom in and out is the little plus and minus icons. If you hold shift while clicking them, it will zoom in bigger chunks at a time. If you hold alt and click on a place, and while still holding alt, click on another place, Accordance will calculate the distance between those places. You can click on multiple places, and as long as you hold alt, it will add up the distance for them all. Accordance has a timeline, which can also search for people in the Bible by right-clicking on them and selecting Look Up in Timeline. The only way to zoom out is the plus and minus buttons, so make sure Hide Interface is not selected. You can zoom in and out faster if you hold the Shift key while clicking the button. You can zoom in on an area by selecting it and double-clicking on that selection. You can change the kind of categories shown in the timeline by the drop-downs on the top left of the screen. If you want to see how much time has passed from one point to another, you can hold Alt and click and drag from any point to another. An accordance will calculate the time between them. In summary, Logos is my current favorite paid software, both because of its lexicon summary and its text-to-speech ability to read any book back to me. But my favorite free software is The Word. It has the most resources available for free, and it has the most custom ability and features of all the free softwares out there. All these softwares are continually being updated, some faster than others, so it will be exciting to see what they all look like in the future. Thank you to everyone who put these softwares together, and God bless.